Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about 10 things they don't tell you about acoustic treatment. I think there's many more than 10, but let's outline 10. It's about all the space we have on the blackboard to work with. So, to help you with your understanding of room acoustics, it's not complicated if you break it down into steps. And you start with basic physics. We have two problems in a room. We have pressure and we have reflections. Pressure is low frequency energy. Here's our room. So pressure oscillates through our room like ocean waves. That's how you have to think about pressure, low frequency pressure. Think about ocean waves oscillating through your room, slamming against your walls, slamming against the floor, the ceiling, the side walls, filling the room with pressure. They even tell you, well, you can position your chair away from the peaks. Well, Guess what? You can do that, but in a, in a few seconds, there's another one coming. So, you know, this dodgeball that people play with setup and speaker positions to eliminate room modes is a little bit crazy. So let's get back to basics. Pressure reflections, waves and rays. Waves of energy are low frequency, like ocean waves. That's how you need to think about them. Rays of energy are like sunshine. They're more straight. They're the reflections that we have to deal with. Pressure is ocean waves. Reflections is sunshine. That's how you have to think about it. If you keep those two paradigms in your head and then you start reading through the products that are out there, you'll begin to kind of understand what product goes where and how to treat it. And then we'll talk about the various degrees of success of those treatment types. Different treatment type for pressure versus reflection. You got to understand that because the physics of treating sound pressure versus sound reflection is completely different. Three types of lower frequency pressure treatment, diaphragmatic, membrane, and hemholds. Diaphragmatic is the one we subscribe to. It's the most powerful. It's also the most complicated to build, of course, and it has the best performance. So everything goes hand in hand. There is no free ride, as in anything in life. There's always cost-benefit ratios. Membrane is the cousin to diaphragmatic, doesn't absorb as much, can go as low, but doesn't get as much. It's lighter weight, easier to move around. Hemholtz is more frequency specific. We use it as a tuning device. Broadband absorption to get the major issues, and then bring Hemholtz in if you got a 60 cycle problem that needs repairing. You got a 70 cycle problem. Hemholtz are frequency specific and they don't get a lot. So you got to use a lot of them. So, you know, people don't want a lot of units sitting around in their room. Building insulation is the wrong type of treatment for pressure. So you can't use building insulation to absorb low frequency energy. Many companies will tell you that it works. It does not. It shouldn't even be in the business. It's toxic to work with. And it, it's not really a low frequency sound absorption treatment type. It's more of a limp mass material type. Lit mass material types can absorb low frequency energy by definition, by our laws of physics. Pressure, reflection, keep those two things in mind, okay? Rate and level. Here's something else companies are really notorious at fooling people. Rate is how much absorption. If you look at a curve, rate is how fast. This is 40, 50, 60, how much energy do you get at those frequencies? That's called the rate of absorption, okay? So that's the critical part. Anybody can design a product. I always tell people, my sister could design a box that goes down to 40 hertz. That's easy. The hard part is how much energy you're going to get at those, okay? So that's what you want to design for. Per square foot, you want a very powerful absorber. The more powerful it is, the less space requirements that you're going to need, right? Every room, what do I have? Every room surface different frequency and amplitude. Let's talk about that. All the problems in your room are based on the dimensions of your room. The dimensions of your room decide what energy fits and what energy doesn't. A 30 cycle wave of energy is what, 34 feet? So if you don't have a 34 foot dimension, which most of us don't, 
that energy is not going to fit. So you're going to have a problem. When it doesn't fit, it produces modes, which is a form of room distortion. Room modes exaggerate or attenuate. You can hear too much of something or you can hear, not hear anything at all. So that's a form of distortion that we have to deal with. And axial modes are the most powerful because they occur between two parallel surfaces. And that's the one that you have to go after first. And then we address tangential and oblique later. When it comes to treatment, there is no one size fits all because we have pressure and reflections. You have to make that distinction. You have to realize that we're treating pressure or we're treating reflections because they use different treatment types. And don't let companies tell you, you can, that you can do both with one treatment type. You cannot. Laws of physics are against it. Here's another thing they don't tell you. Music and voice require linear absorption. Look at our phone technology. Look at the curves in our phone technology. Look at the competition below it. The red line is us. Look how smooth it is. That curve took me eight years and $2 million to create. There's a reason for that kind of dedication because music and voice are different than noise. So you have to have a nice, smooth, linear response. You can't treat a problem with a problem. And that's what you're seeing in the other two companies that are represented in this graph. Look at this, the deficiencies around 250 cycles. Why would you use a technology to treat a problem that doesn't even perform at that octave band? You can't. And our human hearing is really sensitive to small changes in the rate of absorption. That's why it has to be linear. You can't have any spatial irregularities. You have to have a nice smooth curve. Or we'll hear, it doesn't sound like voice, doesn't sound like music. You get that a lot. Most critical frequency range for voice is 125 to 500. They don't tell you this at all. They just assume you don't know and they're not going to tell you to begin with. This is the most critical range for music and voice. That's why you can see in our foam chart that smooth performance from 125 to 500. Any mix engineer will tell you this. 125 to 500 for voice is critical. So you got to keep that frequency response in mind when you're dealing with voice in theater, home theater, recording studios, vocal rooms, all of those issues. You ever notice how vocals sound today in recordings? They sound like they were recorded in a box. Well, they were, and that's what they sound like. There's no free ride here, people. You get what you, you produce. All right, what do we got? Sidewall reflections. We all hear a lot about, oh, primary reflection. Get that primary reflection, which is the reflection from the closest room boundary surface. Well, what do we got? We got a room with speakers. So we get this primary, this is what they're talking about, right? This first wall reflection. But what happens to this primary? It goes across the room and becomes a secondary. Then it comes back across the room, becomes tertiary. So you got three. There's three reflections that you have to be concerned with. Not just one, because they're all audible. And this is a good representation of what's wrong with our industry. Everybody just does enough to get people's interest to sell them something. But it's not a solution. You treat a primary reflection, you're going to hunger in two or three weeks after listening to that for the rest of the treatment. So you have to extend your treatment on the sidewalls for most listening rooms all the way down that sidewall to at least pass the listening position. So you cover those three reflections. They're critical. They're critical to center image focus right here. That's what we're after with two channels, right? We want the speakers to disappear and the music and voice to be between them. That's the goal, okay? Corner brace traps. The definition of an axial mode is unwanted lower frequency pressure between two parallel wall surfaces, not two parallel corners. Here's a perfect example of how the industry has ta taken the definition and perverted it. There's nowhere in the definition does it say two parallel corners. Companies will tell you, put this product in the corner and your low frequency issues are, are resolved. No, they're not. The corner is what, 5, 10% of the surface area of the whole wall? So how can treating 5 or 10% of the surface area of the whole problem solve the whole problem? It doesn't. So you've spent, I don't know, 500 thousands of dollars 
on corner treatment and you still have a 90 percent problem treat the whole wall you'll be better off spend your money treating the whole wall i believe that some of these prices on some of these corner units you you could treat the room for what the corner units cost the whole wall not the whole room okay noise barrier versus treatment here's another issue Companies will tell you that treatment technology will stop noise. It won't. It can't, by definition. Noise transmission requires barrier technology. Barrier technology is not sound absorption or sound diffusion technology. Barrier technology is vibrational acoustics. It's designed to minimize vibration transfer through structures or through solid materials. It's a completely different part of physics versus airborne energy, which we, deals with pressure and reflection. So noise, sound absorption, sound diffusion, completely separate issues. You can't use one treatment type to deal with the other. But they'll tell you that. Had a company tell one of our clients, just put this foam up and it'll stop your garbage truck noise on, on Tuesday mornings at 5 a.m. so you can sleep a little bit longer. He bought it, he put it up, and he had to call me said it didn't work. It can't work. That's the issue. I see this kind of deception all the time. Plants are not diffusers. Books are not diffusers. A diffuser is a critical tuning instrument. It has a frequency response like a, a speaker. It has a low frequency start it has a high frequency finish, higher frequency finish, predictable and consistent. It has to be used at certain intervals, certain distances from diffuser to ears so that the lowest wavelength can fully form or you're going to get phase. No plant that I know of, and I know a lot about plants, no plant that I know of or books that I know of can create a frequency response that's predictable and consistent. Sound redirection is the term you want to use for books and plants, and it's very high frequency specific. To me, it's worthless. It's not predictable and consistent. I don't want it in the equation. Listen, getting good sound in a room is hard enough. Throwing in a bunch of things that are going to produce a response I can't calculate and measure, forget it. Get it out. We don't want it. We only want things that work the way we need them to work. And when they don't, they're predictable and consistent in the reason why they don't work so we can fix it. That's why rectangular rooms are so nice. The problems are predictable and consistent and you can treat accordingly because of that predictability. Surface area coverages. A lot of companies will tell you, put a panel here, put a panel there, you're good to go. Nothing could be further from the truth. The best room is no room at all. Tear down your room, tear down the walls, the ceiling, and listen to your music in free space. Not practical, especially when it's uh, 30 degrees outside, right? So we have to have our room, we have to have the boundary surfaces that the room produce, so we have to treat it. We have to put treatment inside the room to make the room boundary surfaces go away in our minds. So you need a lot of surface area coverage. Panel here, panel there, it's just, it's worthless. I see this all the time and uh, people are very unhappy with it. Your room size volume must match the usage that you're gonna do. This is so critical because the room size and volume determines the problems you're gonna have in the room. You also determine the problems that you're gonna have in the room by the usage. If you're a drummer, you're gonna have a lot bigger requ room requirements than a guy who's doing voice. Because the energy created by the drums is gonna cause a lot of issues in a small room because that energy simply won't fit. A person who's doing voice stands a much better chance in a smaller room because the energy they're gonna be producing is gonna be limited in frequency response and amplitude or strength. Drummers, you know, they're they're banging away at 120 dB SPL. A vocalist, you know, maybe 80, 85. So the pressure difference, the amplitude strength difference is huge. So you have to match the room size and the volume 
to what you're doing. It'll do a lot for you. It'll cut the cost of your treatment dramatically if you minimize the acoustical issues in the room because the dimensions of the room contribute directly to the pressure and the reflection problems. The pressure problems, the lower frequency issues in a room are much more difficult to treat than the reflections. The pressure waves that, that come into our rooms, especially with theater, 30, 40, 50, 60 hertz, huge waves of energy, require lots of sponges, if you will, around the room to absorb the energy. 10 things they don't tell you about acoustic treatment. This is just to start. We'll probably have to do two or three of these as we move on down the line. But just remember pressure and reflections. If you can keep those two concepts in mind when you're looking at a company's offerings for products, you'll be much better off and you won't get fooled so easily and disappointed. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions, and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum, and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.